friends, it's Charlie here. I hope you're all well and doing good. So today I'm going to be doing something slightly different. I am always being asked to do wrap up videos and to talk more about the books that I show in my book hauls because obviously I do a lot of book hauls and um, that is definitely something that I want to do more of. However, wrap ups don't really work for me because I don't always read um, enough books to warrant a whole video on them. I suppose like all of us sometimes we have good reading months and sometimes we have bad so sitting down each month to do one just it just wouldn't work for me and I feel like it would maybe put me a bit under pressure. Um, so I have decided to start a new series of videos which, as you can see by the wonderfully inventive title, is called What I Read Recently. And basically what I'm going to do is every now and again I'm going to come on and I'm going to talk about five books um, that I have read recently. Well, I say books but I mean audio books, Kindle books, all sorts of different types of books. And I'm going to let you know my thoughts on them. I've picked, I'm going to pick books that I feel strongly about in one way or another whether that be I really hated them or I really loved them just because I feel like that's better than just talking about books that I don't really have a lot to say on um, and hopefully as well this will be a good way for you to see what I'm currently reading because sometimes I will talk about the books I'm currently reading um, and as you guys know I don't always get a lot of chance to do Friday reads so it'll be hopefully a good way to keep up with that as well and um, Hopefully if there's books that you've seen in halls, you'll see them again and you can hear if I thought they were any good or not. Um, as you can also see, I have a completely different setup today. I wanted to try something a little bit different. Um, as I said a few videos ago, I'm going to try lots of different things um, now just to see how things go, how I get on with them. I just feel like switching things up a bit. Um, so do let me know your thoughts on this or if you would rather me go back to just sitting in front of the camera and talking about them. Um, so yeah, today I have picked uh, two graphic novels. One of them is a graphic novel series that I have binge read recently. Um, and then I have picked um, a book that I read on my Kindle and then two, two actual physical books. So, without further ado, let's get into the video. <clears throat> so, first up is a graphic novel series that I have been binge reading over the last couple of weeks or so, and this is Jeff Lemire's Sweet Tooth. So, so far I have read volumes one, volumes two, three, four, and I am currently reading number five, which I'm going to keep this picture on because I love this cover. And I'm waiting on the final volume, volume six, to arrive in the post with me so I can finish this series up. Um, but I just wanted to talk about it now because it is one of my favourite graphic novel series that I have ever read. Um, it is a story of a boy, well he's half boy and half deer, he's a hybrid, um, called Gus. And in this world, something horrific happened, uh, this kind of like plague thing, and it killed billions of people. And it was after it killed all these people that children like Gus started to be born. Um, and for this reason, they are hunted for either money or for research purposes. So Gus lives with his dad in his cabin in the middle of the woods where no one can get to them or harm them. And his dad tells him basically never ever leave the woods because it is dangerous out there. So they live together, they have this quite nice life together, although Gus is obviously very secluded. But then one day his father dies and Gus kind of has no choice but to start leaving this cabin and fending for himself, where he comes across a guy called Jeopard. And Jeopard says that he can take him to this place called the Preserve, which he says is a place for hybrid children to keep them safe. And um, in terms of synopsis, that's all I'm going to say, because I don't want to give too much away if you haven't obviously read this series yet. Um, but so much happens even in the first volume. If I said any more about that, it would give away too much of that one, let alone the rest of the series. Um, but as I said, I originally... Uh, I 
So I originally only picked up volume one and then I was halfway through and I just thought, okay, I need all of these now. And as I said, I have binge read them all within a week or so. Um, it's just the most fantastic, fantastic series. The characters are wonderful. Gus in particular, I really um, have just fallen in love with and I really care for him and all of the other hybrid children that he meets along the way are just completely wonderful. And it's just this well-rounded story every time you feel like you can trust somebody or you've got something worked out then something else happens and it really, you just, you just don't know what is gonna happen next. I mean, they're only thin volumes, they're only like a hundred and something pages, as you can see. Obviously, the graphic novels are only short, but so much happens and they always end on this sort of like, almost kind of cliffhanger moment where you think, oh my God, I just need the next one right now so I can carry on with this series. Um, the artwork, let me just swap these over and show you volume one. Obviously, I don't wanna give you the artwork of the fifth volume yet. Okay, so the artwork is absolutely um, amazing. Let's see if I can find you. Okay, so this is Gus and Jeopard as well. Um, and what I like as well is that each new character that comes into it, you start to learn a bit more about them and why they behave in the way they do. Like with Jeopard, in the second volume, you find out more about him, which is great. Um, something else I really like as well is that when you get to the next volumes, I won't show you, um, you get this little... Um, kind of previously bit and it tells you what's happened in the story up till now so even if you had a while in between volumes it really helps you to remember what has gone on and yeah it's just the most fantastic action-packed series it is very very sad at times but don't let that put you off it just adds to the story and I think it's sad because the characters are so wonderful so you're really rooting for them and Jeff Lemire is not afraid to like do really bad things to some of the best characters um but again it just all adds to the story and it's just wonderful even if you're not a fan of graphic novels i would still highly recommend giving this series a go because i feel like <clears throat> it's such a good story that you can kind of forget that you're reading a graphic novel if that makes sense um so you definitely give this series a go as i said it's only six volumes long so it's not going to take you very long to get through them all um well uh, it definitely won't take you long to get through them all because once you've started, you won't be able to stop reading them. The next book that I want to talk about, um, I read on my Kindle and this is The Child Finder by Renee Denfeld. This is an adult thriller and in this, a young girl called Madison um, went missing while she was out uh, searching for a Christmas tree with her mum and her dad um, in this big snowy forest and um she has never been found the police kind of have no leads and it's quite a few years have passed since it happened so her parents contact a woman called naomi who is also known as the child finder because she has this uncanny ability to find missing children partly down to the fact that when she was younger um she was a missing child herself um and it's about her trying to find this girl, um, but we also have chapters which are from the little girl's perspective um, and also from the guy um, that has taken her, um, which is really interesting. You guys know I love that kind of perspective. Um, and I kind of have missing mismatched feelings about this book. I gave it four out of five stars on Goodreads but I'm kind of feeling like I maybe should have given it a three now. The four stars was for the beginning half because I loved it. It was fantastic, it was gripping, um, and also for the writing, because the writing is absolutely beautiful. The part where we hear from Madison herself, um, it's like reading some kind of fairy tale story. The way it's written is fantastic. Um, and so I really liked that, and that's what I gave it four stars for. But this book for me had two faults. The first was that at times, particularly at the halfway point, it started to drag for me. And I felt myself kind of glossing over and purely starting to read just to find out 
what happened to this girl. It started to sort of get a tiny little bit repetitive, particularly with the chapters with Madison herself from her perspective. And the other thing is that even though we have those three sort of main characters that we hear from, there are other characters that we hear from as well. And those bits aren't in separate chapters. So you'll be reading a paragraph and then the next um, paragraph will just straight away be in someone else's perspective. And at times that was a little bit confusing because I had to sort of go back and find out who I was listening from again. Um, so I wasn't a big fan of that. Um, but then that may just be something that I don't necessarily like. Um, but generally, as I said, the writing was beautiful. Um, it was gripping most of the time. There was lots of twists and turns. And um, I think I, I would recommend picking up this book because um, I know a lot of people have loved it and I know a lot of people, um, a lot of you guys would absolutely love it. And so I don't want to say don't pick this one up. I think just be aware that even though it's a thriller, it is very much a slow, slower paced kind of thriller, um, if you like that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, as I said, I gave that four out of five stars on Goodreads, but I may go back and give it a three out of five stars instead. The next book that I want to talk about is a non-fiction book that I read last month, and this is True Crime Addict by James Renner. Um, so obviously this is true crime, um, and this follows James Renner and his sort of investigation into the disappearance of a young girl called Maura Murray. So Maura Murray went missing in rural Hampshire back in 2004 and it's always kind of been an unexplained uh, disappearance. She has never been found. Um, to be honest, not even really many clues have been found. Um, but the circumstances surrounding it um, were very, very intriguing. There's lots of weird things that don't really make sense. Her, some of her family members are quite strange and the way they've gone about things in this investigation has been very weird. Um, and at the beginning of this book, James Renner has lost his job. So he decides to go back into, he's a journalist, and he decides to go back into investigating true crime. This is the story that he picks up on. And basically he goes to talk to people that knew her. He finds out about the events that led up to it, like what happened a few days leading up to it, strange behaviour that she showed. Um, and he sort of finds out more about this girl that she was, and maybe she wasn't necessarily as perfect as everyone sort of her family sort of made her out to be and um he also goes back to the place that she was last seen and he goes to places where people have said that they've seen her um and it's just fantastic it reads like a thriller it is completely addicting and um again just like i said with the graphic novels even if you don't like non-fiction i would definitely give this a go um because as i said it does read like some kind of thriller um and yeah i just felt completely absorbed in this and i kind of felt like i was conducting my own investigation as i found out more stuff about the case so i would definitely highly recommend this one i gave it five out of five stars on goodread the next book that I want to talk about is another graphic novel and this is Behind You by Brian Coldrick and it also has a introduction by Joe Hill who of course is the son of Stephen King. Um, now this graphic novel is very different in that it isn't one whole story throughout it. These are each page has one picture and one bit of text so I'll just show you inside. Uh, I hope, oops, okay, so here you can see there's one picture and then the piece of text says, still behind you, um, and each one is completely different, as you can see, um, but the only common thread they have is that each one, in each picture, somebody is being pursued by something behind them, um, and so basically we get this one line and then we can kind of make our own stories. We can think about what we thought led up to this moment, what we thought happened afterwards. And it is just so unique. Um, again, just like Sweet Tooth, it's one of my favourite graphic novels that I have read this year. Um, it's, yeah, it's so, it's just so 
um, completely different, if I can just show you that. It's just so completely different, and I just loved it. And I have to say as well, they are terrifying. Like, some of these pictures are really terrifying, considering there's not much story to go with them that really says a lot about the illustration and also about the few words that are there. Um, I, yeah, I just absolutely loved this. It's quite hard to get hold of, though, um, but I think you can find it on eBay and maybe the book depository as well. Um, I would highly recommend getting a copy of it if you can. And it's one of those books as well, you don't have to read it all the way through, although I did because I didn't want to put it down. Um, but you can sort of dive back in and out of it. Um, yeah, so I absolutely loved this book and I highly, highly recommend it. And that is Behind You by Brian Coldrick. And then the last book that I want to talk about is A Semi-Definitive List of Worst Nightmares by Crystal Sutherland. This is one of, if not my favourite book of this year so far. And considering it is a YA contemporary, that says a lot because you guys know I don't really like contemporaries very much. But this is absolutely fantastic. It's about a girl called Esther whose family have basically had this curse bestowed on them which means that they are all doomed to face one of, to face um, one of their worst fears in their life. So um, her father is um, agoraphobic so he hasn't left the basement in years and years and years. Her brother is scared of the dark, so the house is always completely lit up. Her mother is scared of bad luck, so if she goes outside and, I don't know, there's a black cat, she will go back in and she won't leave the house again. But um, when this book starts, Esther doesn't really have a worst fear. She doesn't really know what that worst fear is. Um, so she writes her semi-definitive list of worst nightmares, which is basically a list of things that she tries to avoid so that she doesn't have to come up against the same fate that the rest of her family have. And then she meets a boy called Jonah. And Jonah basically says to her, you can't live your life like this. You need to face these fears. So they work through this semi-definitive list of worst nightmares and try to find out what it is that she is terrified of. And it is just the most fantastic book. Just, it's so, so different. You know, you have, her grandfather was a detective before he became ill. And so you find out about his fear and, you know, how this curse started with her granddad when he met death. Um, when he was investigating the murder of two young girls. Um, there are ghosts. It is just so fantastically different. Um, even the chapters have really good names. This one says String Lights and Serial Killers. Um, what was the other one? Just trying... Oh, here we go. The House of Light and Ghosts. Um, it's just wonderful. The characters are kooky. For example, Esther never goes out of the house unless it's in fancy dress. She always wears fancy dress stuff. Um, and it's just brilliant. Of course, I gave it five out of five stars on Goodreads. And I'm going to say it again, even if you don't like contemporary, give this book a go. It was truly wonderful. Um, by the way, this is the US edition because... Um, I prefer this to the UK one. So if you do want this edition, you can get it from the Book Depository or um, eBay or Blackwell's as well. Um, yeah, I highly, highly recommend checking this one out. So that's it. Those are five books that I have read um, over the most recent months. Um, I really hope that you enjoyed this different kind of video. As I said, do let me know your thoughts on it down below. And um, I will see you all very soon for another video. Bye!